Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to some more Five Nights at Freddy's news. I'll keep it a stack with you boys, we have a lot of stuff to cover. It ranges from the books, to the movie, to, of course, FNAF Security Breach. Now, of course, before we do hop into it, you already know what I'm about to ask. If you're watching the video and you are not currently subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really does help me out and it means the world to me. Also, I will hopefully be streaming, if I can, the Security Breach NVIDIA event happening tomorrow. And also hit the like because there's a lot of stuff to cover and editing these types of videos take a very long time. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I know it's super annoying to hear this in basically every YouTube video nowadays. So starting off the news, we have an update on whether or not Markiplier will be the lead role in the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie. If you missed my video on it, I'll leave it linked down below. But basically, it has been revealed through an article that Markiplier will be starring in a brand new series called The Edge of Sleep, which is a post-apocalyptic thriller TV show, and it starts filming next month, just like what Markiplier said. So unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you view it, Markiplier is not in the FNAF movie. Since I neglected to mention in my past video on the topic, he said specifically himself that he does not want to be a cameo, and that he would only do it if he was the lead role. Now of course he isn't allowed to say if he is the lead role, but since he's already filming a project during the filming process of the FNAF movie, I have a feeling he won't be filming two you know, two shows, movies at the same time. So I think it's pretty safe to say Markiplier is not in the FNAF movie. Moving on now to the Fazbear Frights book series. I'm a little late to this news, but a 11th installment in the book series has officially been confirmed, as well as a 12th book, which unfortunately is the end of the series. Now I know a lot of people really enjoy the Fazbear Fright books, but ultimately, it had to come to an end at some point. So if you don't know, the 11th book is just gonna be your typical Fazbear Fright books. But the 12th book is a little different. Basically, book number 12 is a bonus book, filled with scrap stories from the previous entries in the series. And a book you can only get if you buy a complete, amazing box set of the first 11. Now, I'll be honest, I have a problem with that. First off, I don't want to buy all the Fazbear Fright books again. Also, it'll be like 120 bucks total. Thankfully, Scott did touch upon this topic. Here's what he had to say. Hey everyone, I wanted to mention a small note about book 12. While it's true that a physical copy of book 12 won't be sold outside of the full series collection, for now at least, I'm going to figure out some way for people to easily get it without having to buy the whole series again. I'm not sure if it will be a cheap ebook or what, but I'll figure something out. Now, I really do trust Scott. I hope he can find a very fast and efficient way to get this uh, book 12 out for everybody because as cool as an idea as this is, you know, a book filled with scrapped stories from the previous books, including it with a box collection of the first 11 and it's a exclusive to that box collection that's like over a hundred bucks, not the best of ideas. Especially when you consider the fact that we already had a box set of the first like five. So I don't know, I, I, I really do hope that he can find a really good way to release the book without having to buy the entirety of the series again, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. And speaking of the Fazbear Frights book series, Scott released the original artwork for the cover of the cliffs. If you don't know the story behind book number seven, basically it was originally going to be called the breaking wheel. However, before it got released, it was changed to be the cliffs. As far as the community was aware, the only reason for this change was because the breaking wheel is an actual torture device used in real life. And we all thought that that was a bit too gruesome for a book name. And we were kind of right. Here is the original artwork for the cover of the book. Now, if you haven't read the story of the breaking wheel, it is an absolutely terrifying story, I'll, I'll be honest. And I think that is easily portrayed through this artwork. And as you can tell, Scholastic may not have been quite on board with having this as the official cover for the book. Scott said, I wanted to share something with the community. It was noticed by many people that the breaking wheel was supposed to be the feature story of Fazbear Frights number seven, but was later changed to the cliffs. People have speculated that it was because the story was too gruesome, but actually it was because of the cover art was too scary. I thought you might all want to see what it looked like. And this is it. Again, it's a terrifying cover. 
I don't think Scott was the person who decided not to use it. I'm pretty sure if I had to take a guess, it was Scholastic. I mean, just notice how he phrased it, but actually it was because the cover art was too scary. And while we're still on the topic of books, let's take a look at a book that is releasing very early next year in 2022. The official How to Draw Five Nights at Freddy's book will be released on January 4th, 2022. Filled with all your favorite characters from the best-selling horror video video game series Five Nights at Freddy's, this how-to draw is packed with step-by-step -step instructions to create your own artwork of these terrifying creatures. Creations, my bad. The gang is all here. From mainstays like Freddy and Chica, to the twisted and glam rock animatronics. With 96 pages of drawing fun perfect for any Freddy Fazbear's Pizza super fan. I think this is a great idea. So it's gonna be similar to the coloring book it seems like. My only hope for this book is that it has a lot of characters in it. The coloring book was fine. I, I really did enjoy the coloring book, but it had too many similar or just straight up the same characters. Luckily, we already have a few confirmed characters like the Twisted Ones, the Glamrock animatronics, Freddy and Chica. I'm not sure how this is going to go because most of the characters in FNAF actually have a very complex uh, design, especially the Twisted characters. So I'm I'm intrigued. And now let's get talking about FNAF AR. They had a brand new update, a bug patch that was released a couple days ago. Hopefully it fixed some major bugs. I don't know exactly what it fixed because they don't they don't tell you. And it also included some Easter themed uh, picture frames for the photo booth. And then they also tweeted about a brand new event starting tomorrow actually. Catch up with Melted Chocolate Bonnie, Chocolate Bonnie, and Easter Bonnie before the Hop Chocolate event melts away at 5 p.m. PDT today. The new event starts tomorrow at 5 p.m. PDT and we can't wait to see just what's going on as we head into the woods. Now I'll be honest, uh, this isn't looking good boys, I'll be honest. It seems like they're gonna go for another wood forest themed, which by the way, we have already had in the past with the haunted forest. I'm not sure exactly what else they could do for a theme, you know? Like we've already had uh, Tree Freddy, you know, Groot Freddy, also Swamp Balloon Boy and Boulder Toy Bonnie. So unless they go with a more nature, you know, plant theme, like, oh, we have, you know, sunflower, Toy Chica, I don't freaking know. I don't really know what they're gonna go with here. Um, I am very, I'm a little disappointed, actually, that we didn't get Chocolate Freddy and Chocolate, you know, Chica. I mean, the designs are right there. Funko already made them for you. Overall, I'm just very disappointed with FNAF Arrow this year. So hopefully we get some good things this event, but my hopes are definitely not high. And we also do have the gameplay update coming out later this month, but I don't know, man. It. Lumix is making it, making it very hard for me to be actually excited about their new content. Mainly because we're barely getting any new content, so... Anyways, moving on, we have a small update on the Funko Curse of Dreadbear Wave releasing in the Funko Ween event. Which apparently is not being held in October, but instead being held on May 24th through the 28th. I can't remember if I've talked about this already because this is kind of old, but just in case I haven't, there you go. So we will be getting a look at the brand new like action figures and plushies of, oh God, what was the list? Dreadbear, Jack O'Bonny, Glitch Trap, Grim Foxy. There's a lot of new products being released and I hope that they look good. So yeah, there you go. Late May, we get the reveal of the brand new Curse of Dreadbear FNAF wave. And speaking of merchandise, a few people have gotten the Glamrock Freddy, Gregory, and Vanny statue. Which, my god, I forgot just how freaking big these things are going to be. They are 12 inches, a full foot tall. I still think they look great. A lot of people are pointing out Glamrock Freddy's eyeballs, which I... Those things look hilarious. I'm sure it's just a paint job thing. I don't think his eyes are actually gonna look like that on the statue. Hopefully, this is just a painting error and this is not what he officially looks like because my god, what are you trying to look at? But yeah, apparently these are shipping out. Mine don't ship out till like May, so I'm very jealous. Anyways, the final topic for today is the Security Breach Event Conference being held tomorrow. Again, subscribe. You don't want to miss my videos on it. If you don't know, Security Breach is being featured in a NVIDIA Game Developers Conference. Alongside games like Cyberpunk 2077, Minecraft, Valorant, Destiny 2, Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, Overwatch, Sniper Elite 4, Pumpkin Jack, and Crisis. <gasps> Remastered. And Security Breach's segment runs from 11 a.m. EDT to 11.40, a full 40 minutes on brand new info about the technology, specifically 
of FNAF Security Breach. I've already gone over the schedule, I'll quickly flash it up on screen right now, so if you want to pause the video and read it, feel free. But I have also made a video that is dedicated to looking over and theorizing about the schedule, so if you missed that, that's also linked down below. But a image was released as the thumbnail for the live stream that shows off L Chip's room, his restaurant, with no RTX on. And we can confirm this because the name of the picture, as you can see in the top left, is lchip underscore non-rtx.jpg. And I'm honestly shocked. This looks so good, even without the RTX on. Which is good, because I honestly don't know if my PC is powerful enough to run FNAF Security Breach with RTX on. Anyways, I want to go over Steelwall Studios' official statement about what we're going to see tomorrow. They say, as you have likely heard, Steelwall Studios will be participating in the NVIDIA GTC 2021 Tech Talk. We have worked closely with NVIDIA to implement their latest technology, RTX GI, for the PC version of the upcoming title, FNAF Security Breach. We will be going over how the use of RTX GI has vastly improved the spookiness in Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. We want to emphasize that there will be no new content shown. There you have it, folks. Don't expect a new trailer, no new teasers, no new gameplay screenshots, no brand new nothing, just new technology information. Though, there will be a moderated Q&A to answer technical questions. They're not answering who's Vanessa, they're not answering what the heck happened with Glitch Trap. Technical questions only, and I'm very happy to hear that it will be moderated. Anyways, we know how excited you all are about FNAF Security Breach, and we're excited too. If you're interested in some tech talk for the RTX GI technology we're using, sign up and watch. Thank you for being amazing fans, Steerwool Studios. I'm happy that they cleared the air, and also Scott cleared the air too. I will read his comment right now. I watched the video myself for the first time a couple days ago, and just to let you know what to expect, the interview really focuses more on the technology than the game itself. So there won't be any new teasers or anything like that, it's more a discussion on the cool tech used in modern games. And it really is interesting for those who want to learn more about current gen ray tracing and things like that. It also shows you some of the faces behind the mad lads over at Steel Wool. It was a neat thing to watch. I think you will all enjoy it. So yeah, don't expect any any new things. It's just gonna be about the technology of the game, which I am perfectly fine with. I will say, I do kind of hope that we get something after all this happens. Because even though Steerwool and Scott both said we're not getting anything, you know the community is gonna be upset. And it also has been over like eight months since the last ScottGames.com teaser. So I'm hoping for something new, even if it's just like a teaser on scottgames.com, I hope we do get something soon. But we just have to be patient, of course they're working on the game, it will be out eventually. I know some people are upset because we're going into um like mid-April, and Scott said early 2021, not late 2021. But at this point, I think we just have to expect, you know, from the first half of the year instead of the first quarter. But at this point, again, we just gotta be patient. BREAKING NEWS! Yo, what's up? I'm editing right now, and Click Team just released what is maybe a teaser for the release date of the Ultimate Custom Night console ports. Now, to be fair, this is still currently being deciphered, but this is the teaser that they just tweeted out. They said, who has completed 5020 in Ultimate Custom Night? And let me just say, click team, uh, it's me. Number 86, baby, let's go, top 100. Now, at first glance, this just seems like a screenshot from the game. I mean, obviously, it's Toy Freddy playing Five Nights with Mr. Hugs and Cam O. Eight. <laughs> However, if you take a look at some of your systems off to the right hand side, you can see that the power gen has been mislabeled as Switch Box Station. Obviously, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PlayStation. Cool, what's up? I'm back because the release date has practically been confirmed. So I didn't even see this, but if you look at the cameras on Five Nights with Mr. Hugs, you can see 4, 30, 21. How the heck did I miss this? So there you have it. April 30th, 2021 is the official release date for the UCN console ports, which is scary because that is very close. Anyways, boys, back to the outro. So that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow for the event. Goodbye.